All right, so this last example is going to be quite, uh, quite extensive. So um, thinking about the time frame and what we have here, let me suggest that for this differential equation, notice first of all that it has a mixture of x's and y's. It is going to take us some time to build this slope field. So what you might want to do is, um, you know, maybe pause the video, you can, and then come back and check to see, you know, how you guys did in creating this slope field. Um, Otherwise, if you want to just leave it on, you know, that's fine. I'm going to take the time to go through a few of these and think through those with you. Um, and then I'll, I'll probably just share it with you guys completed here in a minute, too. So you might want to turn it off right now. And if not, just kind of listen in. And then it'll be completed real quickly after that. Okay, I'm going to get, go ahead and start with the origin. So when x is y and or excuse me, when x is 0 and y is 0, then I'm going to get indeterminate. So I don't think at this point I'm going to actually show any kind of slope segment here when it's indeterminate, okay, when both x and y are 0. So I won't put anything at all there. Okay, so I might want to, since I have a mixture of x's and y's and I, and I won't have uh, parallel columns or parallel rows, I guess I'll just start in quadrant 1 and see if I can find a pattern and then move from there. So I guess I'll start with 1, 0. If x is 1 and y is 0, oh. There is a little pattern there. If y is 0, the output is undefined, so that would be a vertical segment. Okay, so anytime y is 0, with the exception of x being 0 also, anytime y is being 0, no matter what x is, I am going to have an undefined situation. Okay, well that was nice. Well that causes me to think then about the y-axis. Okay, along the y-axis, with the exception at the origin, um, all the x-coordinates are 0, but the y-values aren't. So if x is 0 and y is not 0, my output is 0, I'm going to have a horizontal segment. Interesting. All right, and then from here, I guess I just have to start building the graph. Okay, think about this point, 1, 1. x is 1, y is 1, my slope is negative 1. Hmm. Okay, at 2, 1, x is 2, y is 1, my slope is negative 2, it's more steep than the slope before it. Okay, this order pair is 3, 1, so that slope would be hmm, negative 3, more steep. This one would be negative 4 and negative 5. Okay, just slowly but surely, one quadrant at a time. I'll finish quadrant one, perhaps, and then uh, then cut the video off and then show you the completed project here. Okay, when x is one and y is two, so we've got x is one and y is two, that's negative one half, so that's going to be less steep than this one, which was negative one, so it looks like it's this way. Okay, two, two, so that slope is negative one. So it's more steep than this one. 2, 3. X is 2, Y is 3, negative 2 thirds. Wait a minute, pardon me. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 twos. This point is 3, comma 2, so that would be negative 1 and a half. This is the point 4, 2, so that slope would be negative 2. So the slopes are becoming more steep the further out I go to the X. All right, now let's look at this point 1, 3. X is 1, Y is 3, negative 1 third, which compared to this slope, which was negative 1 half, less steep. 2, 3 is negative 2 thirds, maybe like this. This is 3, 3, so that slope is negative 1. So they're, be they're becoming more steep the further out they go, but they're starting off closer to the Y axis, less steep. So 1, 4 would be negative 1 fourth. This point is what? 2, 4, negative 1 half, 3, 4, negative 3 fourths, negative 1, etc. Okay. So at this point, I've completed one quadrant. Um, you might want to work your way around uh, quadrant 2, 3, and 4. Okay. Oh, that took some time, but there it is. All right. When you study this slope field right here, the graph might suggest that the regular graph of, uh, or the antiderivative uh, might be a circle, and that's what I'm thinking. 
Uh, by the time we get down to part C, when it asks us to find the actual antiderivative, we'll know if that's the equation of a circle or not. So we've sketched the slope field. It was tedious. Just know you won't be asked to graph something this in, in, uh, extensive. Okay, probably 12 or less indicated points. All right, let's look at part B because we have to fit all this in in one, you know, 15 or so minute video. All right, let y, okay, let, it didn't ask me to find yet. It's just saying consider that y equals f of x is the particular solution to that derivative given above, okay, where this is a point on y equals f of x. Draw a solution curve through this point, okay? So what, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1 is here. Okay, if I'm going to be guided by these slope segments, and just, I don't know if this was mentioned earlier, but you can, you can intersect these slope segments. It's fine, okay? It doesn't matter if you intersect them or stay close to them, but as you can tell right here, it appears that if I follow these slope segments around that I'm producing the antiderivative graph to be a circle, right? We did that. Write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of the function at negative 2, negative 1. Okay, so just to get a visual, here's negative 2, here's negative 1. Okay, oh my goodness. Okay, maybe, might be. Okay, consider that <laughs> to, be an, to, to be a tangent line to the equation at the point negative 2, negative 1. So write an equation for the line tangent. All right, and then use it to approximate the actual value at negative 1.9. So let's look at the actual value, negative 1, negative 1.9, go down. I'm going to intersect the curve first to get a functional value. So actually the, the y value on the tangent line is going to be a little bit under the actual value on the circle. But anyway, we, we, we know what to do here. Let's uh, write an equation uh, for the line tangent to the graph at that point. So this is x, this is y, all we need is slope. I know it's kind of crowded here, but let's see if we can just kind of work with it. Well, the slope is going to come from the given derivative, which was what, negative x over y? So what is that slope segment there? Well, plug in negative 2, we have negative over negative 2, negative 1, so that's going to be negative 2. So the slope at that point is negative 2. Yeah, that makes sense. It's going in that correct direction. So eh, y minus actually y plus 1 equals the slope negative 2 times quantity x plus 2. And what I will do is I'll isolate y. y equals negative 2 quantity x plus 2 minus 1. But I'm not going to go ahead and distribute the negative 2 because I'm going to use it to approximate the function at negative 1.9. So what we're doing is evaluating y at negative 1.9. And it makes the calculations easier if you don't go ahead and distribute. Okay, um, I'm just going to go across here. Negative uh, 1.9 plus 2 is 0.1 times negative 2 is negative 0.2. And negative 0.2 minus 1 is negative 1.2. I believe. Yep. Okay, let's look at the part C that's going to take the, the longest here. Okay, part C says to find the particular solution. That means actually separate the variables, find antiderivatives, plug this value in to get the C. Okay, so remember what we're talking about here. We have a feeling that the antiderivative, once I integrate, should result in us getting an equation that represents a circle. I'm just going to push this paper back up a little bit so I have some more working room. Okay, students struggle with separating the variables. Um, but if you think about it, we want the y's on the left and the x's on the right when the objective is to find the particular solution. Okay, so what I could do here is... Um, Multiply both sides of the equation by dx. Think about what we're doing here. To get the dx out of the denominator, multiply both sides by dx. Okay, but then I do want to also get rid of division by y and put it over here. And because I'm currently dividing by y, I've got to multiply both sides of the equation by y. So let me clean it up. I've got dy 
equals negative x over y dx. But let's multiply by y on both sides of the equation. So I get y dy equals, those would cancel, negative x dx. So if we make a mistake too soon, as far as when we separate the variables, then it's going to throw everything off. Uh, the, the, you will be graded with, you know, so don't stress too much, but uh, do know that we want to kind of pay attention to separating the variables here. Okay, um, we have a differential on both sides of the equation. Let's bring in the integral symbol. Okay, that's y to the first. It integrates y squared divided by 2 equals, over here, negative x squared divided by 2 plus c. I encourage you at this point right now, okay, you can find c later, but I think there's benefit in finding it now. Let's go ahead and find the value of c by using the initial condition. So, um, what is that? x is negative 2 and y is negative 1. So negative 1 squared, etc. This would be a half. That would be 4 divided by 2. So I guess I'll just leave it as negative 4 halves. I'm not going to simplify only to go back and have to you know, get a common denominator. So add 4 halves to the other side. I'm going to trade sides. C is 5 halves. Okay, and uh, to complete the process here, I'm going to multiply everything by 2. If I need to solve and get it in terms of um, y, which I was asked to find y equals, otherwise, once I find c and plug it back in here, this equation is finished for, you know, the, um, for the purpose of just finding an antiderivative. But if it specific, specifically tells me to solve it for y equals, then I have to take it to this point. So now next thing is bring in the square root, positive, negative when I do that. And then you could rearrange and put 5 minus x squared. Okay, so now do I need to choose one? Um, actually, no. I mean, I, I don't need to choose the root, I don't think. Let me come down here and see what it says. Because maybe I want both the top and the bottom half of my circle. Oh, no, I do. I need to choose. And here's why. It says, find the particular solution. Ah with initial condition negative 2, negative 1. So which of these roots right here contain negative 2, negative 1 if I'm going to solve it for y? Okay, so that's the question here. Okay, so the pen's gone crazy on me. Let me, let me see if I can kind of pull it over here. Maybe it'll show back up. Okay. So I have to choose the root, the positive or negative root that contains the point negative 2, negative 1. Well, that's going to be the bottom half of the circle, so that's going to be the negative root. So my answer is y equals negative square root of 5 minus x squared. Had they not requested that I solve this equation for y, I would have been done right here. I would have been done right here. Okay, so you know, this isn't familiar to you as far as, you know, how to name the equation of a circle. So kind of getting off on the side here for a second, let me say this. Come back to right here. When I got to this point and I cleared that equation of fractions, just to bring back some memory, you can just listen, watch. Okay. Um, I have y squared equals negative x squared plus 5. If I were to add this term to the other side, this is a circle centered at the origin with radius 5. And if you look at this circle, it's centered at the origin. Okay, the radius, well, uh, should that be the square root of 5? Hang on. No, 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 not radius of 5, radius of square root of 5. Because okay, I could rewrite this as the square root of 5 quantity squared. So, yeah, that makes sense here. Um, the square root of 5 would be a little more than 2, and that's, that's you know, what this appears to be right here. Okay. All right, so that's um, separating the variables and finding an antiderivative, finding a particular solution involving the constant there, the C value. Okay. All right, so in closing, to wrap this one up, let's just kind of look down here and see if we can um, see what's going on here.
I just wanted to point out that, you know, here are different versions of derivatives and the slope fields that they produce. Notice there's a mixture of X and Y here. So notice down here that there's no, um, you know, there's no row where every row has a parallel line segment. There's no columns of parallel line segments, and that's because you have a mixture of X's and Y's. Well, look at this derivative. It only has X in it. If it only has X in it, then you should expect to see columns of parallel slope segments. So just pick out your favorite column. Look at all those slopes. They're in the same direction. They would be parallel to one another. Okay, this derivative has only Y's in it. Only Y's? Look across at a row. Pick out your favorite row. Is every slope segment going in the same direction? Yes, it is. Okay. And as a final look down here, this will catch up. Um, this is kind of like a different little problem here. The slope field for a given or for for the differential equation will have vertical segments when. Well, if I'm at vertical segments, that means my denominator is zero, but not my numerator. Okay, so if you think about that, I'm going to have vertical segments when the denominator 4x minus 8y equals zero. Well, I can move over the 8y. 4x equals 8y. I can divide both sides by 4. And I could say that that's going to occur when the x coordinate is twice the y. And it looks like that might be choice A. Okay, so when will the slope field have horizontal segments for this derivative? Well, horizontal segments means that the numerator equals 0. So let's solve that. Set the numerator, as long as the denominator is not 0 equal to 0. Factor out an x. So that'd be 3 minus what y. So that's going to occur when either x is 0 or setting this equal to 0, y is 3. How about if I have a 3x here? That's better. y is 3x. So that is choice E. Just want to pay attention to uh, what's going to contribute to you having a horizontal uh, slope segment and a vertical slope segment there. Uh, certainly longer than I wanted, but I know this one always does go long. But um, again, if something's still troubling you or fuzzy, be sure and ask me or at least go back and look at the video again too uh, and begin to process it.